Hi, I'm Steve with RV Squared. Today I've got a super cool treat. I've got Eric from the Barbecue HQ. He's a great friend of mine. And we're gonna talk about barbecue solutions for you on the road as you RV. So stick around. <laughs> Okay, so as I promised, I've got my good friend, Eric Rowley. He's the owner and founder of the Barbecue HQ in Simi Valley, California. He's the man to hit up. He's an absolute expert on everything barbecue. Not only that, but he's been RVing for pretty much his entire life. So that coupled with an absolute grill master, this is the go-to guy. He's a pro at this stuff. And today we're gonna give Eric the stand and he's going to talk to you about different grill solutions because there's a there's a whole cornucopia of ideas solutions that can fit you specifically so i'm going to turn it over to eric all right so uh thanks for having me on the channel here steve but uh so what i've got here this is a pktx after years and years of having all sorts of different grills and one of the nice things about owning a shop uh, is i can literally pick and choose whatever i want and uh, and play with it and i've helped companies r d different products as well so um, now this is kind of interesting that i've actually ended up in this spot especially for how technology driven i am how much i do like the pellet cookers um, but what it kind of boiled down to me was weight and ease of access and actually the versatility so uh, this even though it's labeled a grill this smokes exceptionally well um, it's lightweight so it fits in my basement very well um, so again, I've settled on this and, you know, the only downside is having to light charcoal. Um, you know, that's a pro and a con because the nice thing is you can smoke on this thing very well. You can sear on this thing. Um, PKs are extremely popular in the SCA, the state comp, uh, state cook-off association competition. So um, the versatility there is outstanding. So anyways, yeah, I, there's a lot of good products on the market. Um, again, one of my favorites was the Camp Chef, uh, the, the PG-20 now, I believe they're calling it. Um, it's a portable pellet grill. Um, it can sear pretty well. Um, that's one of the downsides that you don't get with pellet grills is sometimes the searing capabilities is, is relatively weak. Um, but the set it and forget, it, especially around a campsite, it's really nice just to be able to cook something all day long or cook quickly and uh, get that accomplished. But the downside to pellet grills is they are very, very heavy. So again, I've had all sorts of pellet grills. Uh, my other favorite one is the Green Mountain uh, Davy Crockett, now called the Trek. That used to have steering capabilities, but just for performance, they've actually gone away from that. Uh, what is great about the Trek or the Crockett is that they are 12 volt. So right now it's the only 12 volt portable grill in the market, and that's a huge advantage. You know, most of us are running inverters and stuff, so that doesn't become as much as an issue, but there's still an efficiency of hooking your grill straight to 12 volts, and that port portability is gigantic of having 12 volt capabilities, whether you're tailgating or, or camping. So I really tip my hat towards the Crockett. In our shop, we sell a lot more Crockett's or Treks than we do the Camp Chef. There is a difference in price point there. The Trek right now is currently $399. A lot of times they do run sales on those. You can get $25 off or so. The Camp Chef is a lot more. It's about $500, but you do get a little more versatility out of the Camp Chef. It is a bigger cooker overall. I think it does overall perform a little bit better than what the Trek does. The downside is it is heavier. It has legs that swing out underneath it, kind of like a, a, a gurney or a stretcher. And there can be a little bit of a trick to figuring that out. And it's, it's really, for me, it was kind of a two person job to get it out of my basement. It was that heavy. Or with me having the toy hauler, I had it in my, my garage for a bit before we had kids. And uh, it was very difficult bringing it out of there. It was easy to bring it down the ramp, but out the door, um, it weighs almost 80 pounds. But again, the performance, and it also comes up to a tabletop height. It comes up to about the height that this PK does. So that is really unique. Anyway, so I am with this PK and uh, they have a few different models that they've put out now that are even more so portable. Uh, the PK Go, which is their latest model, not to be confused with their old PK Go, which was just a stand that this TX or the, this is actually the PK original body as they call it, would fit on that PK Go stand. But why I like this TX is the stand right here. So I get a nice stand, a little higher, uh, side table here um, and what's nice about the stand is it actually lays down flat and the grill fits right down into it so it's awesome for my compartment in the trailer uh, because I just load it up it's lightweight and it slides right in Eric and, what do you think the weight is on that grill uh, this guy's right about 30 pounds so not 
not bad at all. Versus and the Davy Crockett Davy, is more like. Yeah, Davy Crockett's right about 60. Or the, yeah, the Trek is right about 60. So they've actually changed. The old Crockett had swing up legs and legs that would fold down. Again, it was a little bit tricky. Well, they've actually just eliminated that now with the Trek model. And it has about four inch little stubby legs that drop down. Um, they do have a cart available for it, but the cart's actually designed for home. It's not designed for portability. But yeah, that Trek weighs about 60 pounds. So again, that was one of the things for me. This thing is lightweight and it cooks really, really well. So I carry charcoal with me all the time. I use a half uh, chimney charcoal starter to get the charcoal going in this. Um, if you really wanna get this thing hot, you do need a full chimney. Yeah, right there is a little half chimney. What's nice about that is that fits right inside the grill. Tell us a little bit about the advantages as far as the charcoal, the cleanup. Obviously there's heat up and cool down whereas maybe a pellet grill has some advantages. 100%. So yeah, pellet grill is nice because you literally flip the switch, turn it on, and it fires right up. You don't have to deal with you know, pouring charcoal out, which for some people is dirty. Um, you know, your hands do get black when you use it, but you, know, you can be sanitary with it as well. So start up here again, I like to use a charcoal basket that gets the, all the coals going, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to get all your coals up to the point where you can cook with it. And then I drop it in. I actually usually run half of that uh, chimney in the bottom with uh, fresh charcoal. I'll get that fired up, then I'll drop that right in on top. Um, then you can see on the bottom, I actually have a basket and that's better for grilling in precise areas. It's even better for smoking because it holds all your fuel closer together. So the PK has four vents. You have two up top and two down below. When I first got the PKs, everybody raved about how well these actually smoked and I was a little skeptical. You know, it's a little tight because you're not gonna be cooking directly over the coals, but it does pretty darn good actually. So if you wanted to, you know, smoke these tri-tips for two or three hours, I would open this vent here, close this one here, close this one and then open that one and that would give me kind of an indirect flow path across the grill. Now the PKs are made of aluminum. It's a really high quality cast aluminum. So once it heats up, it's really gonna become this vessel that just cooks exceptionally well. So even though your charcoal is in one area, it's gonna heat the entirety of it up. And they actually talk about running at a higher heat. They call this, <laughs> the shelf here, actually a cooking zone because it will radiate that much heat out. It'll stay 150 degrees here. So if you want to hold wow. something, um, you know, temperature wise outside of there, but you know, so right now I'm not sure what temp we're at. I don't run a temp probe on it because I don't know, it's kind of go off feel. It doesn't really matter to me. I know where these vents sit. So uh, this, we're probably cooking at like 250 right now. So obviously in different areas, you get your different zones. You can see that starting to ramp up temperature wise. The exterior of this, you know, so right now this is 150 degrees on the outside. Um, what kind of a probe do you have that has an infrared reader on it too? <laughs> so do this tell. Is, <laughs> this is a great that's, setup that's for cool. the RV. If you don't have a thermopen, spend the hundred dollars to get a thermopen. It is the best cooking tool you'll ever buy. They are super durable. They're super high performance. This guy is kind of a one-off. They don't really sell a ton of these. It is neat and it's great for the RV because it has the infrared abilities as well. So I use it when I'm checking, you know, my ACs to see if they're working, see if my, um, my tires are hot, those kind of things. So the infrared gun comes into very practical use for an RV. So the only downside to this is it's not backlit, whereas the newer Thermapin models are backlit. And you go back to the big old lithium batteries versus the uh, AAAs that are in the uh, Thermapins now. But, but how long do they last? Uh, I haven't changed this for, I think I've had this for four years now and I haven't changed the battery. So that backlight is really what kills the battery. So that's that's the only downside, but most of the time I'm out here cooking, I got a headlamp on, so it's not that big of a deal anyways. Now this is, I definitely highly recommend this for RVers. And then I also carry a fireboard with me for smoking. And I can actually hook a fan to this that I've done and control the smoke temps that way, but I don't do that too often. I will drop the fireboard in and leave that in and, and take off, utilize the Wi-Fi on the trailer to monitor the cook. So again, I've landed on the PKTX. These things are really, really versatile. I would say the only thing that I miss about the pellet grill over this is one, the ease of cleanup. The pellet grill is just way easier, way easier to start up in that capacity and the ability to use it like an oven. Um, so there'd be a lot of times that we don't want to heat the trailer up. You know, it's kind of a warmer day. You know, I would use that camp chef all the time to either cook a, you know, frozen pizza in or, you know, my growing up, the camping staple is always a frozen lasagna. You know, you can use the pellet grills as basically a wood fired oven because as you all know, the ovens inside of a uh, RV are not the best. So let's say for example, somebody says, well, I'm kind of a run and gun kind of person. I don't want to mess around with charcoal because it takes some time. Tell us about how long it normally takes you because you've got the workflow down to a right. fine science. You've obviously got the max charcoal over there and that's a little bit of a cleanup deal, but 
startup is a big thing. So I'd be curious, like, well, compared to a Camp Chef or a, you know, a, a small Davy Crockett, what's the startup difference on these? Yeah, so, I mean, you're really, to get a, a grill up to searing temps, you're going to be, you know, or a pellet grill, it's going to be probably 15, 20 minutes to get those up to a searing temp. If you're going to be at 300, 350 degrees, it's probably about 10 minutes on a pellet grill. Um, you know, this is going to take a little longer, 15, 20 minutes. There's different ways of starting this to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, at home, I use a product called a loof lighter. Um, I've had their corded one forever, and now I have their uh, cordless one. And I mean, you could kind of use a heat gun if you want, but at home on my Kamados and my charcoal units at home, um, with those loof products, I am at six, 700 degrees in six or seven minutes. Wow. They are ridiculous at how much they change that workflow and how fast um, you know you can get things done with it. But and that's you know, rechargeable? For the Runs the on. one I have is rechargeable. It's a, the Luft X, yeah, the Luft Lighter X, but it runs about 300 bucks. They're not oh, cheap. Okay. So, um, but they are absolutely fantastic. Their corded models are a lot cheaper, um, but now you're running into, especially if you've got inverters and batteries, right. that thing's a giant draw. It's a 15 amp draw, you know, so. Okay. Um, so it's like, a, it's like a heat gun on steroids. 100%. Okay. So the other thing that I do is I carry a map gas torch with me, and that's another way that, you know, I can get this thing at searing temps, and I'm talking 600 degrees in a very, very short time, probably you know five to six minutes. Um, map gas is extremely hot and, and works well for that, for portability. Now, so. do you use the PK for anything other than what you're doing right now, which is indirect smoking? Do you take the lid off? Uh, um, I know some of the PKs do have that capability. Yeah, Grilling. so the, the newer grills, the, the PK goes. Um, so it's a, the PK go itself is a smaller unit, um, and they bring vents over from their th the PK360, which is their biggest unit. Um, and I do like the vents on the PK360 because it's kind of like a dial. These ones are cool, but the dials are definitely a little more precise and a little bit tighter fitting. With that PK go is they basically have a hibachi mode where you can take both halves. There's grates that fit in both and load those things up with charcoal, and you get a tremendous amount of workspace on that the tx here you don't have that capability but if i fired this whole thing up with a larger charcoal basket or put charcoal all the way across you have a giant grill space on this but you know it, it's it's pretty good what you can do and just uh you know this little bit of space so these are about four and a half pound tri-tips so definitely have plenty of room on there it's a cool grill i was privileged to get um, a couple demo grills well we used the camp chef pursuit which is a um, mm, couple year old model now. Yeah, it's still, they saw that in the lineup. Pursuit's and still in the lineup. It was really nice. We were on a run and gun, and we never set foot more than a couple days at any one campsite. What I really liked about the pellet grill is, you know, you plug it in and you hit start, you go inside, you start prepping your dinner, and it just does everything automatically. And when you're done cooking, a couple scrape ups, clean ups, you throw the uh, bucket inside, you stuff a towel on the drain tube and you let that thing cool down and because most of those are more lightweight sheet metal there's not as much density for them to cool down it'll be cooled down to touch within maybe less than a half hour yeah. slap those legs up throw them in i will say though that compared to these pks um, most of the pellet grill options like eric said have a downside and that is they're bigger they're bulkier most of them are taller you know, if you can't muscle it around with your wife, it's just a cumbersome option. These things being cast aluminum are awesome. That said, you still have to plan for storage. Now, Eric's got other options too, such as griddles and things like that. So um, the other thing I carry with me is, is a Camp Chef Versatop griddle, they call it. It's your single burner. Um, I love it. I, I mean, we sell the Camp Chef products, so yeah, I'm partial there, but I've had Blackstone before. Camp Chef came out with their griddle products, and I think that Camp Chef, their cast iron, the surface is much better. Uh, Blackstones are very prone to wind issues. Camp Chef just, they don't have that. So uh, that's a huge, huge thing. And just if you're already in the Camp Chef realm, you might as well stick in that Camp Chef realm. So many people have the burners. I did that for a while where I had a giant three burner one and I have the two burner griddle, which is awesome. I love the size of it and the versatility. I love being able to bring it outside and cook popcorn on it outside. And, and again, but I was just trying to eliminate how often was I actually cooking for that many people. And for me, the answer was not much. So I have a Versatop that I just, I plug into one of my propane tanks and I'll bring a portable Camp Chef portable table out, which their portable table is one of the best in the business as well. Uh, runs about a hundred bucks. It folds up into about a, a five by five 
size like this and it's about 36 inches long um, and it's adjustable so you know my experience in the competition barbecue world we like the taller tables for being able to carve the meat and that kind of stuff a little bit better so i carry that with me i'll throw a griddle on this as well i'll just throw a cast iron or there you go. pan in there and use this as a griddle as well who, do, who sells so, that who uh, makes it? that's camp chef as well camp just, chef. just cast iron pans so i try to really you know even with a 40 foot fifth wheel i try to multitask as much as i can and you know some people lugging around cast iron is not the most weight efficient thing but you know it, it works so i'm a giant fan of cast iron cool tell us about your shop then yeah how so do people get a hold of you my shop is the barbecue hq we're located in simi valley california just north of la uh, our website is the bbqhq.com we have a bunch of portable options on there um, some of them we can ship some of them are in store only but our our website is designated for that pretty well and even like rubs and spices and all that stuff we sell a ton of that and i've got Two different rubs on here i'm always playing with different stuff so we have hardcore carnivore black is the charcoal looking rub and then uh, my go-to is the uh, suckle busters campfire which is this one right here yeah i mean overall like i said the pks are i'm a really big fan of them it's nice they're lightweight i usually take everything apart on it and go empty it over the, the uh, fire pit or you know a lot of campgrounds have ash cans so that makes cleanup really easy on it every once in a while at home i just burn or if i'm here and i got nothing going on i will crank this thing up to 700 degrees and just let it burn off everything on the inside so the maintenance is actually pretty minimal on them um, you know the pellet grill will have a drip pan uh, so that's a little bit different cleanup and on your bigger fattier cooks you have that grease management which is nice this you don't a lot of it ends up in the bottom or i'll put a foil pan underneath and collect it that way or fold up make a little boat out of foil um, you know so that is the one downside to these but anyways uh, yeah check us out at the barbecue h hq.com uh, tons of products up there and uh, you can always drop me a line if you got any questions hit us up on instagram um, all of my employees are pretty well versed on portable stuff or request me and we can definitely have a conversation okay so there you have it that wasn't by any stretch the complete story from the barbecue hq eric's a humble guy uh, but he's a wealth of knowledge. They've got everything for grilling on the road. Hit Eric up, they got a huge warehouse. We're gonna drop some links in for the Barbecue HQ into the descriptions and keep watching our channel. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Okay, take care and safe travels.